Okay, now anybody can see um, here that Pento was one of the proxy stalkers that came to my work. It's terrifying. You can see terrorizing when somebody is coming to your workplace. You have to work. It's a necessity. And this creep star is coming where you work. Or like I said, having somebody order DoorDash and I guess hacking it to make sure I get the order. And um, so then it makes you not want to work. It makes you scared to go to work. Um, you have to suck it up and go. But it um, it's called economic abuse, coercion, grand larceny with intent to coerce. I paid Joe Chadwick $5,000 in no-show fines not to, so to avoid things like this. Mr. Robertson and, uh, you know, things like this. This guy, when he tells me, uh, look at that. You'll be $5,000 richer if you'll be creeped out with by him for a couple of hours. I, know, I was like, fuck no. So uh, he needs to stay away from me. Then, um, as this goes down, that's recorded and the transcripts are here. Um, he tells me, you know, you could ruin him politically. And I'm like, I don't care about that. You know what I care about? I want him to leave me the fuck alone. How many times do I have to repeat myself, Mr. Perry? You need to keep up with everybody else. Leave me alone? Sounds nothing like who told on me. I'm not going to tell you that. I don't even know. They don't tell me how they get the information from you to me. They don't tell me that. We don't have leaks. You do. Because people don't talk. There's a respect, like the code of ethics I just read. You keep that shit confidential. It's about safety. It's about safety. Look, right here. Politically, you could ruin him. What? Politically, you could ruin him. He repeats it. Yeah, I don't give a shit about that. I just want him to leave me alone. I don't like him. He's skank. He's low life. He's low class. He doesn't fit in my crowd at all. He's weirdo. He's a sex weirdo. He's a criminal. He's a serial killer. He's a child pornographer. He's a cop killer, allegedly. Okay? I know a whole lot more about it than anybody else knows about it. I know a whole... Because my police report was given right over to the offender, my guys are not going to talk to Tulsa police. They're not going to risk information getting out. They don't want out. They know me. They trust me. And I'm a victim. I have that protection. I'm not giving up my protection for you, Mr. Perry. You are nuts. I wouldn't be alive if they weren't protecting me. I'd be dead. You wanted me out at that club right after I, that March uh, 2020 email to the Florida State's attorney. I think we, you are recorded. I think we finally found the hitman that could kill Cindy, and uh, it won't be linked to us. And you knew I had that, and you did it anyway. Let's do a medical emergency. She'll help the guy. And then we'll tell him he had a virus. She needs a shot. What's in the shot is strychnine. And your hitman said, what do I do if she won't take the shot? And you said, you make sure she takes the shot. You tell her she'll die if she doesn't. I typed that whole thing up, put it out. Didn't go to work. How much money do I lose? I lost five grand to Joe, giving him no-show fines. But I lost actually more than that. I lost the amount of money I would have made had I gone to work. You're, in for, you're getting in my wallet. You're pissing everybody off. And then we get more. None of your victims have gotten what I've gotten. None of your other victims have what I have. They don't have it. They don't have a Michael's drug email. They don't have a harassment email. They don't have a McNamara email. They don't have a uh, this, do they? So also, um, the other one that we have gone over is Dr. Russell. Remember, they had me see a shrink for a year and a half for treatment of PTSD, but they've told everybody, oh, she's crazy. Am I? Okay, sure. Pinto, I just imagined Pinto. I just imagined Mike was drugged. Yeah. I, I, I talked to a shrink, and I was like, because Dr. Russell explains in her letter why she couldn't do the evaluation. I'm like, I might have to go to trial. They, they're trying to say I'm delusional. And he goes, well, to, to diagnose del delusion, we have to look at what you're looking at, and if you see something I don't see, then you're delusional. So I have to see the video, and I have to see the blood tests. Okay, well, they destroyed that. Well, that tells me you're not delusional. Well, they wouldn't have done that. They had to make sure that was available. And those two doctors in Texas at Texas Tech University, um, they had to have their license yanked. I'm not going to put my license out there on the line like that, my reputation. I'm going to see your evidence first before I say anything. And it's a two-hour evaluation, too, by the way. Um, so... 
she's uh, saying right here, I work, he pokes, I'm like, he pokes and pokes and pokes, we call him poking, his guy calls him poking, peeping, pink, panty, pathetic, Perry. his guy says that, we thought that was hysterical, I mean, I'm sorry, but you've, you've reduced yourself to the uh, butt of jokes, sir, with your very offensive conduct, sometimes people have to make a joke to take the stress off, because um, you're causing a lot of stress, people don't want to deal with it. Um, so this, she's like, I work with some people with developmental disabilities and they're big and tall and you know, they, they know how to escalate, hey, or something and you ignore, but the problem is they can es escalate more than you can ignore. And that's what you've got with Charles. He will escalate more than you can ignore. You had Jody Arias stalking Travis Alexander slashed his tires. Next step up murder in the first degree. You had Mr. Perry and Mr. Roberson vandalizing my car. Next up, up murder in the first degree of Chief Miller. Because I'm telling you, Mike doesn't have superpowers. He doesn't have it. And I have help, Mr. Perry. I don't have superpowers. I can't will, you know, magically will this Fabian puzzle to me in jail and all this stuff. And then what they wanted to do is do the second false arrest, I guess, on harassment. And, um, you know, we're, she, we're harassing her, forwarding her mail and vandalizing her car. And um, taking our money, getting in her, her uh, food delivery apps and jamming that up and getting into her workplace and having guys go in there and threaten her. But we're going to say she's harassing us if she tells on us. And by the way, when they planned all that, Justice Scalia dies. He's a First Amendment guy. And he didn't die at just any time in any place. He died right then when they were planning that in West Texas. Yep, and then what happened next... What happens next is William O. Ritchie. William O. Where'd he go? Hang on. William O. Ritchie gets upset. He's a former mur murder cop. He's the commander of DC Homicide. He starts questioning why protocol was not followed in West Texas where Justice Scalia died. He, again, while they're planning this harassment bullshit, which they did twice in civil court. And we got two people poisoned, not tested. We've got a judge who died, maybe had a, his pills switched out or something. Protocols not followed. Postmortem protocol. He's questioning why the hell did that happen? So that's another problem that you got to explain, Mr. Perry, in our courtroom. Yeah, you're going to have to explain stuff in our courtroom you haven't had to do before. It's going to be interesting. So this whole page here documents all the, they went into court and said oh we're not contacting her in the forum state of oklahoma well but you have dave and you got terry wagner and you got uh you know um there's another one there's two or three other ones you got uh pinto you've got um nikki james let's see mickey james here Mickey James said something to me. He comes to my club where I am. Mickey James is in Native American, by the way. Tells me he's DEA and instructor, firearms instructor for police, feds. And I'm naming feds. He didn't know any of them. I'm like, hmm, I don't know that that's what you are. If you don't know any feds that I know, I don't know that many. So um, he's threatening me. And um, the next day I'm texting him. See, I text him. What you said last night. And uh, he goes, yeah, it, it may be worth a suspicion on Mr. Perry to go ahead and kill you that we saw with Chandra Levy and Gary Condit. And uh, he says that he signed an NDA and he knows a lot. He'd been watching behind the scenes. See? I've been watching behind the scenes. I'm like, what the fuck? Trying to, tr trying to talk me into dropping my lawsuit. There, and tells me there won't be any charges here. I'm telling him, yeah, well, they're going to be somewhere. See, I signed a letter of discretion. I didn't know this guy. He came into my work. So this used me as a test case before the Supreme Court. We want to send her home, harass her. When she tells on us, we're saying she's harassing us and use it as a test case before the Supreme Court. And again, that's it was odd that of all places at all times that Justice Scalia dies, it's then and there. Not in D.C. He died in West Texas. He didn't die at some other time. He died right then. Same thing with Mike and Lucky. Of all the cops that happens to, it happens six days after I file a vandalism report, and there's no damn way Mike beat anybody to death and looks like, you know, looked like he looked. 
So this was dated 1231-2017. I'm telling. Yeah, see? Yep, way back. They planned that. So I don't let them, they don't, I'm supposed to testify, but they talked um, the attorneys, I guess, and to not letting me testify. So I filed a motion to intervene and, um, and a subsequent one with a little bit more information. And uh, there should have been a hearing on standing. Keep in mind, we've got like four or five situations here where there's a law. I filed a lawsuit. Burden of proof is on me, and I'm not allowed in the courtroom. All of a sudden, it's just all dismissed. There's a secret, you know, ex parte hearing, or there's a phone call made. Judge Egan. All of a sudden, it's all just dismissed. Same thing happened here. That's not that's not fishy. That's not fishy at all. I filed a motion to intervene for Officer Neely. There should have been at least a hearing to determine whether or not it has standing to do so, and there wasn't. There's no hearing at all, nothing. He's just found guilty, and the whole thing's over. Nope, it's not over yet, I promise. <clears throat> so, you, you know, you're, you're about to have your day, Mr. Perry. You guys are something. You think you're going to you think you just kill people and get away with it. This was the um, receipt, actually, for the charcoal I bought to curtail the uh, symptoms of, of what they were giving me. There's two of us now. Two of us now. Here we go. So, Terry Wagner. Um, see, on July 28th, he's all distraught and can't come into my work. But, then he asks on August 2nd, can he come in? Look at what wife his wife died on on that night, on the on the night his wife dies, he wants to come in. They had him give him ju give me jewelry. They said let's starve her out, have her pawn it, and we'll say she's in possession of j stolen jewelry. Actually, he gave it to me, and um, it was all crap. So the jewelry the jewelry guy actually heard um, my guys had me take a picture of it. My, the, he actually heard the recording of them talking, and he goes um. I'm looking at I don't think they had given it to her yet because this jewelry is crap. It they a pawn shop won't take it. That's how many times they've tried to frame me for something. And then more recently, this chick that looks similar to me. Um, but we've heard the recordings of the witnesses saying, No, the the girl um that actually did this crime is a lot heavier than Cynthia and I are younger, darker hair, darker skin. So they try to get information on what color my hair is to get her to dye her hair, try to get me to tan. I guess they put her on a diet. But the thing is, is, on the day of the crime, it's still different. Doing it after the fact, you know, again, tampering with evidence here. We're, we're concocting a lie, trying to make it work. So who the hell goes in a strip club on the night your wife dies? I mean, they, you know, they wanted something that night from information-wise, or they wouldn't have done that. This, this guy, um, he's coming in to see me, um, and then all of a sudden drops off the planet. I don't hear from him. It was a year. It's July 2019. I didn't hear from him. See, I'm trying to get in touch with him. Then all of a sudden, they want him to talk to me again. So there he is. He pops up. Yeah. <clears throat> Conduit of coercion. And he tells me initially that to, this is the law right here, Mr. Powell. And um, this was for Mike. I did this for Mike. You know, um, this is the law that establishes um, perpetrating a fraud upon a court, false imprisonment, and just intimidating, it's trying to intimidate somebody. Yeah, it's illegal. Brady violations, two or three Brady violations you got here. This was the confined space like he was found in, face up. If you're beaten and you fall, you're going to fall slumped over. He was found nice and neat, placed in that small confined space which Mike was drugged and asleep, so he couldn't have done that, could he? The, this was the uh, the guy out in Manfred had bed bugs bad. They had it. Mr. Perry had uh, one of them yelling at me, you're the only one that has them. Well, I did the Google ser search, and there had been a lot of complaints about bed bugs, and they're like, oh, they won't hurt you. Well, that, actually, those can get infected. Those are, I was covered with those. It was embarrassing. It was awful. They were itchy. They were miserable. And like I said, they can get infected. So that wasn't cool. Lucky wasn't cool with that either. First, let me say that I'm happy that the lady in this video is okay. Second, let me break down what rape culture is. Rape culture is the fact that that man felt that he was entitled to some of this woman's time just because he said, let me talk to you for two minutes. 
Doesn't matter if it's two minutes, five minutes, 20 minutes. If she said no, no means no. Rape culture is the comments that she has on her video about how she should have just spoke to him or dressed differently. Rape culture is me taking the heat for calling out other men for their terrible behavior. Rape culture is trying to explain stuff as, oh, it's just locker room talk. No, it's not locker room talk. Talk, you should talk the same way wherever you are. We all know that rape is not about sex, it's about power. So for you to force yourself on somebody, even if you're just talking to them, is disgusting, dude. Jeff guys been raping you? Okay, so again, Mr. Robertson didn't come up here to pick a fight with you. I even texted you, I think, I said, I'm not Wyatt Earp coming up here to mop up. Didn't come here to pick a fight with anybody. I came up here to be left alone. Because I'm getting harassed by a guy just like that, except weirder. Much weirder. Mr. Perry, don't contact me. Anytime you guys don't like, you guys all say you don't like getting told on, you don't like getting caught, and all that, and that's bullshit. There's no way that's true. When Perry contacts me, peeps on me, hacks me, invades my privacy in any way at all, causes any kind of hardship, loss, or harm to me, you get told on. More than ever in your lives. You asked for it. You fucking asked for it. And it's been that way since the McNamara email. And I can't keep repeating myself. Perry, I don't talk to stupid people. I'm sorry, I don't have time. I'm, I, I'm from Vegas. I lived in Vegas for a long time before I moved to Lubbock. I was around all kinds of rich and famous people. I worked with surgeons. They get it first time you say it. I don't have to repeat myself. So I'm not used to somebody like you that doesn't get it. There's a cause and effect here. Cause is you touch a hot stove. Effect is you're burned. Cause is you fuck with me. The effect is you guys get caught and told on more than ever in your lives. It's like you like that. I didn't pick the fight. You did. What did I ask you to do? Get the fuck out of my life. Leave me alone. That sounds nothing like help me tell us who told. That. I I'm not going to help you with that. Because when you're in jail, I'll have my privacy back, my reputation back, and I'll never be broke again. You want to do me a favor? Get the fuck out of my life. Or don't ask me again. I don't want to hear from you at all. I don't like it that you can see me in my house. I don't like it that you're here. That is disgusting. I asked you to get out of my life. You're raping me, sir. I'm not in love with you. You repulse me. Even prisoners, Dr. Weck said, are repulsed by sex weirdos like you, like Jeff Epstein. He had cameras in his own home, and it pissed his friends off when they found out. How much worse is it that you have cameras in other people's homes, and you do not have my consent? And my landlord is to get them out. I don't have to be here. I don't even want to see it. I don't even want to get them out of my home. We, they got you recorded talking to my landlord. Kick her out. Now what are you going to do? You're going to have to explain all that in our court. Because we're not doing this, Mr. Perry, just for, you know, because we're bored. We're going to play all these recordings of you, 33,000 emails, 33,000 recordings. And that's only what you know about. It's not for party entertainment, sir. And, David, we knew about, I don't know, a week or so ago, I think I said it in a podcast, we knew you were the one that went uh, to, to mess with the mail at the, up at the airport. And I think I said that. How would they know I was even, that's where I mailed it. But for stalking, hacking, peeping. Okay, so now we know that you seem to have an affinity for DoorDash, Mr. Perry. We talked to DoorDash. DoorDash said, unless he hacked her, there's no possible way they could always get her, his people. Every time we're going to do something, if I'm going to apply for a job somewhere, Mr. Perry, my guys call first. We're going to catch you. Just like the mail. So, and I've been sitting here listening to him about the impeding in different ways they plan to impede your appeal. One is they're going to make sure you don't make any money. But the other one is this. So what I want you to do is mail that to the Tulsa County Court, the DOR, and the amended petition. Mail it. Get that out first. Don't walk it in. It's going to cost you a little more. Do you have it? I said, yep. Mail it. It did. It cost me twice as much. Mail it. They're going to fuck with it, and I'm going to get them. So, Perry, put your doll down. Act like a grown-ass man. I don't want to talk to you. You're like talking to a mental infant. I don't have time. A lot of people don't have time. So when you think you're fooling people, I'm sorry. It's the other way around. They're fooling you. They don't want to waste their time talking to somebody that doesn't even make sense. I'm not going to help you. I want you gone. Everybody's sick and tired of you and wants you gone. It is easier and easier and easier to get information. 
How that information is obtained, I have no idea. We don't have leaks. We don't have leaks. We respect the confidentiality, okay, of uh, witnesses. Now, this is how everybody else sees you, rapist. Get the hell out of my life and do not contact me or anybody I know again. Leave me alone! Please! You should just talk to me for two minutes. First, let me say that I'm happy that the lady in this video is okay. Second, let me break down what rape culture is. Rape culture is the fact that that man felt that he was entitled to some of this woman's time just because he said let me talk to you for two minutes doesn't matter if it's two minutes five minutes 20 minutes if she said no no means no rape culture is the comments that she has on her video about how she should have just spoke to him or dressed differently rape culture is me taking the heat for calling out other men for their terrible behavior Rape culture is trying to explain stuff as, oh, it's just locker room talk. No, it's not locker room talk. Talk, you should talk the same way wherever you are. We all know that rape is not about sex, it's about power. So for you to force yourself on somebody, even if you're just talking to them, is disgusting, dude. Leave me alone!